Hey, this is Jason Moss of Georgia Manufacturing Alliance and Manufacturing News Network. We've got a great call lined up for you today, and we're going to be talking. Uh, this is our kickoff call for the uh, Manufacturing Task Force. Uh, the Manufacturing Task Force, this call, this, this call and this group was put together uh, uh, because of uh, manufacturers from all around the state have been reaching out to us, asking us what can they do, what you know, uh, what what engagement can they have in helping uh, fight this this battle of the coronavirus in our in our uh, in our state. So um, that being said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over a couple just real quick uh, uh, highlights of uh, of what this call is about, and some of the other resources that are available. Uh, then I got a couple people that I'd like to invite to to share their insights on the call as well. Um, but but we are committed. We're a, a Georgia Manufacturing Alliance. If you're not real familiar with, with us yet, we're an organization designed specifically to help support and grow manufacturing in the state of Georgia. Uh, we do typically we do live events, we do plant tours, networking events, and educational sessions. And and last year we had about 3,500 people attend events that we hosted all around the state of the state of Georgia. Um, and, and that's designed primarily so that we could share best practices and learn from each other while we're building our peer group, connecting with and meeting other manufacturing leaders. Um, now, as you, as you, as you figured out, you know, everything came to a screeching halt a couple of weeks ago. And, and now what we're doing is we've reset and we're doing everything that we've got digitally. And now we're, we're really putting, um, putting in place, uh, in using the tools that we've got available to us to help support uh, and help during the fight uh, of this war for uh, over coronavirus, trying to, to see what we can do as, uh, as individuals and as companies and as a community to, to gather together and figure out what resources we've got available to, to, to fight this battle. We've got a bunch of information that we're going to cover all throughout this. I've, I've got some information that I'm going to share at the very end, uh, some late breaking news stuff that just came out that I'll be sharing as well. But I did want to uh, make a quick introduction to uh, Ms. F Kim Falcon, and she is with uh, Okabashi, and she's the president of Okabashi. It's a company that manufactures shoes here in, up in Buford. And, you know, we, we have had so many people reach out to us as an organization to say, what is it that you're doing or how can we help? Um, and Kim wrote a, a, a really uh, in-depth email, uh, very specific, asking, uh, clear questions on what she could do and how, uh, what she thought we might be able to, to do as an organization, as a community. So, so she really prompted a lot of this today. And uh, again, appreciate and acknowledge your leadership in this, uh, in this, this project and, and putting together the task force. And Kim, I'd like for you to share just a little bit about your thoughts and, um, and what, what you see that we can do as a community and, and kind of what, what prompted your call. Um, hey there, thanks for having me on today. Um, yeah, so we, we are an injection molding factory at our, at our core. We make footwear up here in Buford, Georgia. And like a lot of other small businesses, we've uh, definitely been impacted by coronavirus. We uh, sell to a lot of customers who have been hit really bad with this, like resorts and spas, um, you know, vacations and discretionary income. It's really, you know, it's hurt our customers, which in turn means our shipments are slowing. So uh, you know, I see, I see machines that are not running and should be and start to think to myself, how can we put together a supply chain with other businesses who might be in the same place so we can try to provide essential goods for our industries, our critical industries, whether that's medical, food related, anything like that. How can we help? How can we put to use this skilled workforce, this equipment that's sitting ready to go? Mm -hmm. So... That was really why, why I reached out and I wanted to do whatever I could to be able to help. I know we're all remote, we're all working from <laughs> uh, different home offices and everything here, but we can still get stuff done. And I think uh, my background supply chain, so that's where my mind goes with the supply chain and logistics and just we have to be able to link up together. And if we do, we can understand what capabilities are out there and I really think that we can uh, put them together for some good. Right, right. And, and I think you mentioned something your husband also is, uh, might have some, some capacity. And... Yes, he does. My, my husband actually owns a CNC shop. So we're both, I'm on the injection molding side. He has his own uh, Swiss uh, CNC shop and he's in the same boat where he's looking for uh, what can he be producing. Nobody wants to see, um, you know, workers sitting idle, machines sitting idle. We need to keep the economy going and keep people keep Georgia working and, and make sure that we're also providing things where there are shortages. Yeah. 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 No doubt. And that's, that's, you know, um, uh, that, that was one of the reasons, um, uh, you know, I, I, we 
we sat and talked for a little while about um, what what resources do we have available? Mm -hmm. I believe that we can manufacture just about anything that needs to be manufactured in the state of Georgia. We got some of the brightest minds and well equipped shops, but but how do we make those connections? Um, and as I was going through this, and we've been serving as an organization for a little over twelve years, uh, the Georgia manufacturing community, and we've got a directory that we publish, but those are for for GMA members. But I know that there's a lot more resources that are out there. I know that we have capabilities well beyond our direct membership base. So, so what we've talk, what, talked about and decided that we're going to do is we'll put together, if you go to manufacturingtaskforce.com, it will land you on this page, on a specific page on our website. And that's all we're going to be talking about on this page is, is the manufacturing task force. How can we gather data, gather information, and share it with the appropriate uh, departments and, and divisions that can you know, take action and, and, and really um, put the resources that we've got, make those available. So um, again, that's one of the things that we're gonna be doing. Again, I apologize for the delay in swapping out video there. <laughs> You're free, Kim, now you, can, now you can move around again and grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> All right. Um, but, um, but, but as we, as we were talking about it as an organization through some of my leadership team as well, uh, we were kind of kicking this around is, is there's really no, uh, no solid database of the capabilities, the equipment, the capacity that's available, um, uh, in the state of Georgia. And, and what we did was I'm gonna hop over, I'm gonna switch over real quick and I'll share the screen, show you, show you some of the, some of the genius things that we put together in a very short period of time. Um, and, and, and I've got even more exciting information that I'll be sharing with you about that. So stand by just a second. Um, sorry, um, my team has told me that I keep bobbing my head and moving around and looking at all kind of weird stuff. If I'm if I'm looking through that, just 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 bear with that for a second as we switch this over. Um, I hadn't, if they if they ever come up with a um a device that will let you see make a camera invisible then i think it will sell millions so, <laughs> but i hadn't figured that out yet but what we're going to do is we're going we're going i will show, share with you a little bit about what we've got what we've put together um the manufacturing task force page it's under it's 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 right now it's heart uh archive um, stored under the news tab and then under news tab that's out of the, way, uh, the task force and this task force um, is to again to be a collection point a central collection point of all the information uh, to help us you know through this 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 war on corona now what we did was we we've we've posted a list of um, information that the governor has governor and his team have, has identified as critical components that are in need now for our medical, uh, uh, our medical community, first responders. Um, so these are just a handful of the things that are, that are needed today. And we put together also a, um, a, um, a spreadsheet that allows you or a, a input form that will allow you to put in your company name, your first and last name, your address, and then what resources you have available. Now, uh, continue to use this. Feel free to fill out the information. Um, we got a notification today, and I am really thrilled that um, the Department of Economic Development has, has reached out to us as an organization and said uh, they love what we're doing, and, and the governor will be announcing today, uh, he should be announcing it a little bit later today, um, that um, a new program is going to be rolling out and that new program is exactly what we have done here. Uh, they're going to be collecting data specifically from manufacturers to know what capabilities, what equipment, what materials and supplies, all of that information. Um, and, and, and instead of having two points of data to collect that, as soon as they get their page uh, squared away, they're working on it. I mean, they're doing all that they can do right now make sure that they get their page set up and they get the uh, uh, appropriate information gathered. What we, what our initial plan was is to gather all this information and to get with the governor's office within the next few days. I talked to Tom Kirby this morning about, you know, who is it that we need to talk to? He gave me some connections of, of the right people to connect with. Um, so in perfect uh, timing, 
uh, again, the, the governor has assigned that collection information to the um, Department of Economic Development. So they're gathering the data rather than us. Right now, we're going to continue to take it. And the minute that they get their collection portal open, we're going to redirect that link. So if you're if you're if you've got stuff now that's available, whether it be labor, um, if you've got warehouse space, you know, let us know if you got a dock door, what kind of square footage you've got for space. You know, do you have ability for assembly? Do you have you know what equipment and machines do you have that you would uh, be willing to contribute to to helping uh, specifically the medical community in in our fight combating the coronavirus and the impact that it has. Because again, we, we may need electrical, you know, circuit boards designed and built. We may need plastic injection molding. We just may need products shipped around. Scott Luton, a good friend of mine, his wife, Amanda, um, has a cut and sew uh, business that she, she, she worked out of her house for a long time. And she has equipment. She started sewing uh, uh, masks together. Uh, over the weekend and, and really it's really neat how she's put that together and she's had some people donate you know envelopes to be able to ship that stuff out and uh, so if anybody needs one you know she has has the ability to ship what she can produce out uh, there is there'll be a link in the show notes that gives a if, if, if you're happen to be gifted and crafty about doing that kind of stuff there's a link in the show notes that'll go to atlanta business i mean atlanta journal and constitution article that gives a pattern that you can use if you want to contribute do the same thing so um but we do have uh, amanda gray uh with us i, I don't know if we got amanda on the line with us and, and if amanda you're on the line with us go ahead and unmute yourself and, and join the call i know she has had a little bit of a technical challenge earlier uh getting on the, oh, there did, she is yes perfect yeah. glad to have you on the line with us yeah, sorry about that. My first Zoom meeting, so it took a minute to get all set up. So no worries, no worries. We're glad to have you. All right, and uh, let me let me uh, introduce you to Amanda. Um, Amanda is with the Georgia Expo. I'm gonna flip the video over, and so um, uh, Amanda is with the Georgia Expo, and it's an organization that helps uh, build. Um, uh, you, you guys do pipe and drape. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do, and and how we got connected. Okay, I'll just toss so, that over yeah, to you. How about that? Okay, um, we're a manufacturing company up in Swanee, Georgia, and we manufacture um, pipe and drape for the trade show and event industry. Um, and the way we got connected was on, I believe Friday, I put a video out on LinkedIn um, in my sewing department. So we've got 30 members in our sewing department, over 20 sewers on staff um, as a way to try to shift gears really quickly and use our capacity in our sewing department to maybe help with some of this um, relief effort. So because we're not sewing any event and trade show curtains, uh, I thought, you know, we'd love to keep our employees employed as long as possible throughout this. And if we could switch over and partner to help. So uh, booties, masks, um, hospital gowns, blankets, we've got a lot of capability there. Um, and uh, so we're able to help with that. Now, the, the only thing is, we're trying to find manufacturers to partner with for like overflow sewing work. Um, because we don't have the cotton materials that I think are required by a lot of the stuff. We have a lot of the velours and polyesters. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, one of the other things that's kind of keeping us afloat um, through this day by day is that we are getting some disaster relief orders for pipe and drape, which is portable partitions, mm -hmm. uh, based fabric structures right. for um, screening rooms and testing kits. And, you know, as they're building the, putting up all the tents everywhere, um, we're putting in pipe and drape rooms to help create some privacy and some dividers for um, testing and, and overflow hospital space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. And I love the video. I mean, you guys, you did a fantastic job of, you know, showing you. what your capabilities were and, you know, and, and your heart for the community trying to figure out how we can, how we can continue to help support each other through this. Cause it's going to be a tough time. And, and it's, it's neat that you mentioned that, you know, um, we're all going to be we're all going to be changing the way that we do business. And there'll be some companies that will be, this will be a boom time and, um, you know, uh, mission essential companies are, 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 are going to, you know, uh, play a different role. And um, it's going to be, you know, it's up to us to figure out how we can make these connections again uh, through the, the conversations that we've had. Um, uh, Amanda, 
Amanda, I appreciate you going online to our database and filling out that information and we'll be passing that along to the right, to the right people uh, very soon. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, but again, absolutely. if you've got, if you've got facilities, yeah. if you've got capacity, if you've got labor, because there's some companies that don't have enough people to, um, uh, to do the work. And then there's some people that are, you know, considering layoffs and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so we need to, we need to balance the ship as best we can. Um, and, and the, the reason that I say that I want, I'm going to hop on into a kind of a, a, another topic. Um, yesterday, the department of labor, uh, came out with some new guidance for, um, how they're going to be doing unemployment. It's really neat if you have not seen this. And, and, and again, this is going to be in the, in the tech notes down below, but, um, the, um, the information on un temporary unemployment. So basically it says that if your employees are working less than the regular hours due to Corona, uh, uh, COVID-19, they are eligible. If they're not working, but still employed by you, they are eligible. If they've been terminated and they're no longer full-time or part-time employees, they are not eligible. Um, and it's, uh, currently employers, they can, uh, apply for, uh, six consecutive weeks for their employees uh, and unemployment must be filed every week. So as an employer, you're going to have to file uh, for your employees every week and the department of labor, they've got a really great step-by-step -step guide on what to do and how to do it. Um, Shruti Dewan does our payroll for smart payroll solutions. And she, she just sent me all this information and I talked to Tom Kirby. We checked on the DOL. Um, if you go to, I'm actually going to flip over to that real quick. Um, the department of labor, there is a page. Actually, if you go to our website, um, under, under news manufacturing news network, this is a new piece. We just, just loaded this up. We're going to put a breaking news section. So every day that anything, the, the latest and greatest, this is the place that you're going to see everything that we bring to the table under the breaking news. You can click here for more information and this will take you out to the department of labor. This gives you all of the filing information on how to do that. Um, and anything that we get guys, if you have links that you think would be beneficial to other manufacturers, please feel free to share those with us. Send it to support at georgiamanufacturing.com. We're not probably not going to be able to put every link to everything that's all the resources that are out there, but the ones specifically targeted for manufacturers and businesses, um, make sure you let us know if, if there's things we don't have posted on there and you think that it's important. Um, I have had some recent comments and questions about, you know, what to, what, what kind of businesses, um, uh, again, we hope that, that we don't ever go to the, to the point where we're, um, uh, having shelter in place, but the reality is that's a possibility. I know that, I know that governor Kemp is pushing, pushing as hard as he can to keep, um, uh, keep from making that decision. Uh, I mean, he's getting, he's getting some pushback on a couple different areas from the, you know, from the, from the medical community and the business community. He's, he's getting targeted from all different aspects. Please keep, please keep him and all of our elected officials in your prayers because they need it. You know, they need, they need guidance and wisdom and the decisions that they're going to make. Um, and, and we just got to love them and appreciate what they're doing. But, um, but I know that if they did call shelter in place, what does it look like for essential, um, uh, businesses, you know, I mean, you know, that's, that's one of the questions is, are you mission critical business that's impacted that you would continue to bring your employees in? And, and Amanda, if you're, if you're sewing masks and doing, you know, um, hospital gowns and, and, and that kind of thing, we don't yet know exactly how all those pieces are going to fit together. But, uh, but I've been, re I've been c contacted recently, um, about some, uh, some, some guidance that, that, um, couple departments are looking for is how do you evaluate that all of that information as it becomes available to me I'll make sure that we post it on the website under that breaking news tab so check on that once a day and make sure you got all that information um, and, and stay as current as, as possible so um, uh, Kim do you have anything else uh, that we talked about um, any, any uh, we've got several other piece, people uh, pieces that we're going to cover but I just wanted to you know before we transition uh, what were your thoughts about the task force and 
Um, I think you, you covered it pretty well, but uh, just that, you know, things are changing day by day, hour by hour. So um, we just want to keep, keep up with everything, um, keep up with whatever the announcement is going to be from Governor Kemp at five o'clock and we will adjust and move in real time and, and work with the uh, Department of Economic Development as much as we can to make sure that all that information is getting into the right hands and that at the state level they have a full list of everybody's uh, capabilities and, and resources that are available right now. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be tricky for a little while trying to figure out who's, um, you know, how we can continue to support each other. But, you know, the, the uh, communication, I think, is critical. We got to just make sure that we continue to share, uh, not, not just through each other, through, you know, this format, but make sure that your, that your employees are, have as, as, as high level of comfort as they can by keeping them in the loops because they're, they're, they're concerned as well. So, um, Amanda, do you have anything else that you'd like to add before we, before we shift gears here? Okay. All right, stand by, guys. All right, so, um, well, I did want to, uh, again, let you know that we're going to be uh, hosting these 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 calls. Um, we have got a uh, pretty rich call schedule. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip back over, stand by just a second. Um, the, I'm going to share with you. This is how the, the if, if you've not used it, this is how um, I'd encourage you to, I'm still still a little clunky with this this interface here. Sorry about that. Um, uh, the Manufacturing News Network. This is where you'll find all the breaking news, an overview of how how the pieces fit together. Um, under the events tab, there are upcoming events. Now every Monday at ten o'clock, we're having a town hall, and that town hall is open to anybody that's connected to or wants to know the latest information as it relates to manufacturing in the state of Georgia. This morning we had um, uh, State House Rep Tom Kirby on the line with us. It was a fantastic call. Again, I failed to I failed to click the record button, so uh, <laughs> we didn't get that recorded. But we're gonna we're gonna do better next week. He said that he is gonna try to be able to be on the call next next Monday, but no guarantees. I mean, this is all pretty fluid. But we will keep you up to date as 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 this unfolds. But every Monday Monday from ten to eleven, and then every. Uh, Monday afternoon from two to three, we're going to be having this task force. I mean, this was the, the kickoff call. This is just to give you the foundation. Um, and then we're going to be talking about actionable items next week on what we can do and, um, and any ideas that we can do to help, again, continue to support each other. Now, the other thing that we, we are providing is um, under the upcoming uh, events tab, there are a list of roundtables that we're doing. Now, this is a subscription-based you know, process. If you're not a subscriber, we'd encourage you to do that. You know, it's, you know, very inexpensive, $9, nine dollars nine ninety five for, for members to join the, or get a subscription, Nineteen ninety five for non GMA members to have a subscription. But this is where you can get small uh, groups put together. We're going to cap these rooms at 20. So we won't have more than 20 professionals, HR professionals together and in, in, in on each one of these calls. So we're going to HR and supply chain on Tuesday, on Wednesday, it's finance and public relations. And on Thursday, we're going to be doing sales and marketing and executive leadership. Just as an example, typically the, the round tables will be just that. We'll be, you know, inviting uh, industry leaders to talk with each other. We've got a topic each for each call and we're going to open it up and just, you know, kind of have dialogue and share best practices. But occasionally we're going to bring in an outside um, uh, partner on this and um, on this executive leadership round table, um, Really excited to have Waldo Waldman. Um, he is a keynote speaker. He's a New York Times bestseller. He's a you know decorated fighter pilot. Super great guy. And he's going to be sharing you know some some insights on you know when the missiles are coming you know and and they are coming right now for all of us. When the missiles are coming, how do you lead through tough times? And so he'll be he'll be doing the first about twenty minutes of that call, and then we're going to open it up again for sharing best practices with executive leaders to be on this call. Uh, we are limiting the amount of people that, you know, again, are, are plugging into those calls. But, um, but that is the um, manufacturing news subscription. This is kind of how that works. If you're interested in plugging into that, um, the task force, this page, 
has got an interview. Kim and I did an interview. This is not the full length video, but this is a, um, a snippet of it, um, of when we were talking about kind of how we're setting this thing up. Um, these calls, again, if, if under the task force page, as we, do, as we get information in from the state and from the governor's office, we're gonna be plugging the information here you know, the, 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 the requested products, the things that are needed. And then again, this will link back to their page once they get the, um, get the uh, web page up uh, so that can gather data. But until then, feel free to fill out that information and I promise you it'll get passed along to the, to the right folks. It's, you know, this takes about five minutes to, uh, probably three to five minutes to fill it out. And again, we'll make sure that it gets in the right hands. Um, and with that, um, we do have, uh, a couple minutes it, it, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that if you have if you got specific questions feel free to uh, you know tag those over to the side I'll try to answer them as, as I can um, and Kim's okay it says Kim's core technology is injection molding elastomeric parts is there any way to use this uh, to make medical or consumer critical parts. Kim, uh, can you can you share with us a little bit about that? And I think there was something else that you you, you had as a possibility as well about, well, about we've, your shoes. We're definitely trying to investigate whether that is possible. Um, okay. I don't, there's not any medical devices that we can make the full end product, but certainly components to be made. Okay. So we are trying to understand if, the, you know, where's the need? There are, I'm guessing, injection mold shops that are overburdened right now if they're trying to run all the different parts that are needed for some of, you know, whether it's ventilators or, or whatever um, end product it is. So with molding, the long lead is usually creating the mold. So we're trying to understand if right. there are pack up in the supply chain where, you know, there's multiple molds and only so many machines available. And could we shift that temporarily over to, other shops that have open capacity. So, so definitely we can, we can basically mold any thermoplastic here. Right, right, right. And you guys have got a great facility. And the other piece that I loved, I loved how you're thinking out of the box and you're working with your team about, okay, so outside of shoes, what can we do and how can we, how can we put all this equipment to place? Um, the other piece that I really loved is you were talking about, you know, um, uh, you have the ability and you've got trained people on an assembly line process as well. So if, if, if we can, if we can gather the parts from different places and, and have this as a, as a resource to do assembly, I'm pretty stoked about that as a possibility as well. So. For sure. We can definitely make adjustments to, we, we do a lot of like assembly and kitting here mm -hmm. for um, larger customers who have specific pack outs. So we could absolutely be kidding or doing light assembly on um, completely different products. And, you know, it, the conveyors work the same, mm -hmm. the boxes work the same. We can do it all. We've got trained people. So we're really ready. And I want to, I want to keep Georgia working. So right. that's really critical and, and also providing those goods that are in short supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I did have somebody ask about something about the ability, ability and capabilities of manufacturing vending machines. Uh, you know, I mean, if it's directly related to the coronavirus and supplying for that need, we'll address that. Feel free to email support at georgiamanufacturing.com. If it's not directly related to impacting the war on the coronavirus, we are not taking any, and we, we just don't have the bandwidth. We're working 16, 18 hours a day. Uh, a lot of folks are sitting at the house with their feet up on the couch and, and, and they should be if they can. But the reality is, is this is the time for a community to come together. And this is what we're committed to do is, is we want to be the vehicle uh, and the voice for the manufacturing space in Georgia um, and, and, and make those connections. So, you know, hit me on, you know, uh, another line if, if that's something that for some, I don't, I don't quite see the connections for vending machines in Corona, but there might be. And if there is, I'd like to know what that is. So, um, and let me see, hold on, stand by. Um, and Amanda, have you got, is there anything we'd love to love to get some um, insight from you as well? Hold on just a second. We'll flip that over. Bye bye. Okay. All right. Share with us a little bit about what your thoughts are around the task force and, 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 and some, you know, what else can we be doing? Um, I think just trying to quickly connect people that can fulfill needs together. So, you know, if like you were talking, Kim, about how you have um, resources to make things. So connecting you with people that need things made and same with us, you know, if there's things that need to be made, we're geared up to do it. We just need the materials kind of thing. 
So okay. I think in that list out there, and you were talking about um, how Governor Kemp's kind of doing a project that he's about to announce. Is that in partnership with you guys or? Um, uh, that's actually through the governor's office. And, and, and so okay. we've talked with the economic development team and um, they actually reached out to me today and said, we love what you're doing. Keep what, keep doing what you're doing on the task force. Cause we need that piece. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so that we have a central location for the data to come, that's going to be going directly yeah. into the governor's office rather than through GMA. Cause that, and again, and I agree completely with them is we don't want to have any confusion about people listing stuff in two or three different places. Manufacturers have already got plenty to do. So, so we're, consolidating right. that and we're going to support the governor's office and the initiatives that they've got and we'll be driving all the traffic through that and hopefully we'll be able to get some of the folks from the menu, uh, the governor's team to be able to join us on this task force next week to, so they can share some of their insights and some of their specific requests so uh, they seem to be very open to that uh, and again it's all you know all hands on deck right now um, you know we, we don't have any um, any egos in this deal anywhere it's about you know all of us working together and figuring out what, what the win is for the manufacturers and for the community. So that's, that's the, that's the game plan. And that's a great question, Kim. I really, I mean, I'm, I mean, I appreciate you asking that for sure. All right. So yeah, I think it's just about sharing and getting ideas out and, you know, letting everybody know what everyone's capable of so we can kind of come together and make it happen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think that's the key is, is the more that we can, um, um, the more that we can share, st keep the lines of communication open and use every resource that we've got available. Um, and, and, and guys, if you have other information or questions that you'd like to uh, um, ask the group, feel free to use that, the group chat over on the, it, if you're not familiar, and, and, and so I'm gonna make sure I explain this every time. If you're not super familiar with how to use Zoom, uh, I'll give you a, uh, like a 30 second tutorial. If you hover your mouse over on, kind of towards the bottom of the screen, if, you, if you're doing it online, you'll see that there's a speaker on the left-hand side, and beside that, there's a little uh, camera. There's an arrow beside the speaker that lets you know which microphone, if you have multiple microphones, uh, that you're connected to. And then if there's a slash through either of those, both of that means either your speaker or your, your little microphone is muted, or your camera is turned off. You know, So those are the two, two things that you've got there. Um, and then the other button down kind of towards the bottom, it says chat. Uh, if you click on that, you're able to, it opens up a little side window and you can type in questions that you have that you can share either privately or share with the entire group. So I'd encourage you to, to use the chat feature. Um, up in, if you, if you hover over uh, kind of up towards the top right corner, there is a, uh, a view display. You can either look at through gallery or you can look at speaker. There's a couple different ways that you can, you know, I mean, in, in some, you know, just user preference, how you like that. But, um, but, uh, but guys, that's, that's the main things that I wanted to go over today. Keep your eyes out on manufacturing news network. You can just type that in directly manufacturing news network. That's where the, uh, the breaking news is going to be as we get the information, as we can link to, you know, to, to critical information coming out to the manufacturing space. That's where we're going to keep you posted. Uh, manufacturingtaskforce.com. Again, Manufacturing News Network is the, the, the general information, but the manufacturingtaskforce.com goes to the task force page. And we will list as you know, as the needs change, we'll we'll make changes on that list of the things that we need. Um, we're going to be doing this task force call next Monday at two o'clock. Again, anybody that wants to can be be on on board with this call. Now, this call is primarily designed for manufacturers that have capabilities. Um, uh, or capacity that they're willing to share, or they want to be able to, you know, they got employees, they, they, they either need work or, um, or they need employees, you know, I mean, it's, cause it's going to be on both sides of the fence pretty, pretty quick. Um, make sure that you, you communicate with us through support at Georgia manufacturing.com support at Georgia manufacturing.com is the best email for us. Um, I have most of my team. It's just me and my son here, but the rest of my team is working from home and I'm, I'm thankful that they're doing that. But uh, 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 so we try to man the phones from eight o'clock to five o'clock, leave us a message. We'll try to get back with you. But the, the best and easiest way to get a hold of us is again, by email. Um, and I'm, I'm looking through the notes here. Does any, if anybody else has got any questions that we need to get 
for our guest today or about the task force at, in its, on its own. Okay. Um, and, and with that, guys, it looks like we're in pretty good shape on questions, but, um, but I, I do want to, again, I, I want to encourage you, keep the lines of communication open to your employees and to your teams, let them know what you're doing. Um, this, this change in the way that they're doing unemployment, um, I mean, having six weeks, you as, as employers, you have to file the information. They actually get a, 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 a they get paid on a debit card. Uh, it's based on the amount of, um, what their wages have been, uh, whether it's full time or part time, you know, and, and what their what their hours are. All that information is on the Department of Labor. They're making it a lot easier to be able to do that because I mean, there's been some concerns. I mean, you know, I've talked to people from you know that have you know five people on staff, you know, to twenty five hundred people on staff, and and if they have to make the call that they need to close the facility, that changes a lot and that impacts a lot of lives. So. Um, everybody's got different challenges that we're facing, but, um, but with information, it makes, makes it a lot easier to make those decisions. So, um, the, uh, as, as the information becomes available, we'll make sure we put it on there. I do have a notice here that, um, especially the chemical manufacturer in Canton, they've got excess capacity and capabilities to make hand sanitizer. Does anybody have resources for distribution? Yes, Mark, uh, Mike, we do. Um, if you'll, again, email me that information directly, I'll make sure that, that we've got plenty of folks in the supply chain uh, world that have, you know, uh, logistics that can get stuff moved around and we'll, we'll get you connected to where it needs to be delivered to. And, and, and so we will, we will definitely be talking to you. And this is the kind of stuff that we need to be, you know, uh, doing to support each other. Um, we are going to, so, so Monday at 10 is the town hall Monday at two is the task force. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 10 o'clock and at two o'clock are round tables. And then we're going to do something really cool. I think hopefully you'll enjoy this. Um, if you've been on social media at all, you know that there are people with unbelievable senses of humor and we're going to share some of that. I have, I, my, myself and my team for the past, past couple of weeks have been collecting some of the best memes on the planet as far as, as it relates to uh, the coronavirus. We got some pretty good ones. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to post a web page. And again, it's, um, um, on, uh, it's going to be Friday funnies uh, for us to be able, we got to do business. I get that. But we also need to make sure that we get social distancing, but we don't need to have relational distancing. We don't need to be, you know, isolated. We need to stay together as best we can. And if we have to do that digitally, hey, we just need to do that digitally. So we're going to have uh, a Funny Fridays at four o'clock. Again, open to anybody that wants to shine in. They can either call in or join us by Zoom or whatever. Um, it's a BYOB if you choose to. You don't have to, but if you got one and you want to, we're going to kick our feet up on the desk and we're just going to chat. We're going to talk. We're going to have fun. Uh, we're going to share some, some of the, some of the uh, comedy and, and, and some of the funny stuff that we can because we got to lighten the load just a little bit. This is a tough time, but I believe that humor will help, help get us through some of these, uh, some of these challenges and times ahead. And we want to be, again, we want to be able to serve you in every aspect that we can. So um, with that, uh, again, I appreciate everybody's time and participation on the call today. We've got so much ahead of us. Uh, by working together, we'll be able to pull through this. Again, keep, keep the folks in leadership and your prayers and your thoughts and folks that have been affected. I think we're over 770 that have been uh, um, um, diagnosed positive with coronavirus in Georgia. Uh, so pray for them and their families through this tough time because that's a, you know, it's a, it, it, I couldn't imagine uh, having to deal with that. We do have one of our GMA members that has gone through the process and has, has come out the other side and, and he's doing fine. I'm going to be interviewing him later in the week, I believe. I've got two or three other interviews that are scheduled. As we do these one-off interviews, those are also going to be available on the Manufacturing News Network page, and everybody can see all of the interviews that I've done to date and all of the one-off interviews as we do them. So, so there's some really good information, and you can learn some best practices that you might not have thought of, but we, we want to make sure that we make that available to you guys as well. So uh, keep an eye on that. All right. Well, with that, Amanda, do you have anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap this thing up? No, I, th I think that's good. I appreciate you working with my technical difficulties. Duh, you, you got it. You got it. I appreciate you being online with us. All right. Kim? No, I think that's it. 
All right. Okay. Well, guys, with that, we're going to pack this thing up. You guys have a fantastic day. We will see you on upcoming calls and let us know if there's any other way that we can be of service to you. You guys have a great day. Thanks, Jason. Thanks. See you guys.